Okay, welcome back. Thank you for joining us in our segment of After Church, um, where we've come to discuss what the pastor has preached about, um, discussing the word, just going a little bit further, a little bit deeper into the word. Um, and again, as I've always said, um, we come to um, get more understanding, to ask our questions, um, to dig deeper and to not critique the word, not to pull it apart and, you know, uh, to criticize. But this is a moment for asking questions to get more understanding, to help us in our growth and in our walk with Jesus Christ. So, And um, yeah, digging into the word. And this is the part that I really get excited about because I get to ask questions um, to to learn, to mm-hmm. grow. So I enjoy, I really enjoy this part. Not that I don't enjoy everything else, but it's just this part is, um, I guess this is almost like a passion for me because I, I love asking questions to learn. So. Amen. Blessing to all and um, not to prolong, but as we go into the next several minutes where we thank God for each and every one of you and we bless God for you loving back on them. As I said earlier, we, we thank God for this is the day that the Lord has made. I know this is um, Super Bowl Sunday, um, but it's also the first Sunday in February, which we did have communion. And God always wants us to give him first priority. Amen. And we thank God for that. And we, we bless God for his grace and we bless God for the word of God. And we thank God for each and every one of you. And like I said, um, to God be the glory. We bless God for all that he has done and the thing that he is still doing. Amen. Even as you sit back and enjoy the game later and um, remember this, that you've always um, not put him first, but have him first in your life at all times because everything else can fall into place. And um, and we thank God that he allow us just one more time to come and have communion with him um, as a um, body of believers coming together. Amen. So we thank God for that as we um, just discussed, like I said, after church. Um, um, the, the word of God is um, real. The word of God, it heals, it delivers. I'm, I'm telling you, the word of God check each and every one of us. And um, I love when it said, let a man examine himself where we touch base with let's talk communion. And the thing about it is that why communion, why not communion, is an invitation that God allow us to come and commune with him, not just while we take it symbolic, but also on a daily basis communicating with him. Amen. And, you know, it's, it's one of his, it's a holy sacrament. Yes, it is. Um, it's a holy sacrament. And it's a time to, to stop and reflect, you know, just a moment. It's. It's Amen. a time of worship, but a time also a time to just stop and reflect, mm-hmm. <clears throat> not only on his life, but but your life and how you are mm-hmm. responding, how you are reacting in life. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a time to look at yourself, stop yes. and look at yourself for that moment, oh, and not waiting until the day of communion, Amen. but leading up to communion. Come on now. And communion, and he says to do this as often as as you remember me. There's not, you know, every church is allowed to, um, to, to, to specify what date and what time they do it and Mm -hmm. how often they do it. Amen. Some people, you can do it every day. Every day. You can do it once a year. Frequently. Um, Amen. As often as God is laying it upon your heart. Yes. Um, and your church, his, um, your leader, the leader of that house sets the, sets the time and the order for it. And usually you see it once a month. Wait. Mostly you see it at, you know, once a month. And, and it's, you know, I just heard that Holy Spirit said, and I love what you just said. The leader was said it whether it's first Sunday, second Sunday, third Sunday, fourth Sunday, fifth Sunday. And it's the same thing with every year. The Super Bowl is set. The first Sunday in February. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. I'm a football <laughs> fan, but I didn't know that. The Super Bowl is set every Sunday. Now, prior to 
back then, I don't know, but since I've known football, it's always been in February, in, in regardless of whatever day, when they set that Super Bowl, when they set the time, it's set. And sometimes people are set right in front of the set waiting on the game. Amen? Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah, so, my God. <laughs> but so, I, but let me just say this. I know you want to go in there. But look at how God has set forth his son mm-hmm. for us. Amen? Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, it set forth and given his son forth. And it wasn't something that God just said, oh, well, let me do this. My God. Because now, now that, that this has happened, let me do this. Amen. But God had already... That that was already decided. He mm-hmm. already knew he was going to do it. That was already in the in the plan in yes. the works. Yes. It was already in his mind and in his heart. Yes. This is what this was his plan. My Lord. He mm. knew that this was going to have to be done this way. Mm-hmm. But um, but you were talking about communion, mm-hmm. and you know, you when you begin to ask these questions, you know, well, why? Why do we do this? Mm-hmm. Well, this is something that. That has been done back in the early churches, mm-hmm. um, and you know, and, and what's the purpose of it? So, but you know, if you read First Corinthians mm-hmm. chapter eleven, if you start in the beginning mm-hmm. of that chapter, reading it from the beginning, it begins to <coughs> mm-hmm. <coughs> excuse me. It begins to he begins to talk about um, who's this Paul. Mm-hmm. He talks about the in in verse one. Followers of Christ. Amen. In verse one, I love this. It just says, "Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ." That's it. That's scripture. So he, Christ, did this. Yes. Christ did this. So we follow him. Amen. And this is just communion is a time of union, mm-hmm. fellowship. Yes. A, a moment of in, intimacy. Yes. And ex, a moment of experience. Yes. With this. with Jesus Christ. Amen. And it's not literal. It's not literally. Mm-hmm. It's not a literal thing. It's a spiritual thing. Amen. It's not just That's literal, symbolic. but it's a spiritual. Mm-hmm. It's a spiritual moment of worship. Yes. Again, it's a part of your worship, um, because you're remembering. Mm-hmm. What he what he did, you're remembering mm-hmm. what took place upon the cross. Amen. What led up to the cross. Amen. What le- what happened during the cross? What happens after the cross? Amen. You're remembering that time. So when you're do when you're doing that, mm-hmm. you're following Christ. You're following Christ. You're being a follower of Jesus yes. Christ, and you're partaking. Of his blood and of his body, you're partaking of mm-hmm. it. Not literally, yes. but again spiritually. spiritually. So yes. you want to follow Christ. So if you read that, if the you first. begin to read that the whole chapter of First um, Corinthians chapter eleven, when you read that, it, you have a whole nother. You you see the context. You get the full context mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. of what's being talked about here. So. If you start, and th- th- this just blows my mind as I'm reading this. And, and, the, the, and that's what the word does. And I love it. Even in that scripture you point out, that's why Paul would always say, follow, even when you think about it, follow me as I follow Christ. Mm-hmm. And, and that, that scripture sets the tone. Amen. And so in some other, because you, you all know, you should know me by now that I, I, I love doing the research. Mm-hmm. And as you go and look in these other translations, um, I believe the message version speaks of, you know, the subheadings, because I have a study Bible. Mm-hmm. And the study Bible in the King James Version, um, beginning with verse 17, well, beginning with verse 1, mm-hmm. the topic is proper worship. Wow. It talks about proper worship. And again, when we're in communion, com- communion is part of your worship. Amen. So it talks about proper worship. Um, another translation speaks of um, public worship. Mm. Um, another translation speaks of um, um, the order. The order. The order yes. of worship. Amen. Um, so, and it's just interesting because we sometimes we look at communion 
as something is, oh, well, we just do this because this is what we do. I know. This why is what our church does. Why not? Amen. <laughs> no, we're, and we do it, and then yes. we feel like, well, wait a minute, everybody else is doing it, so I should do it too. Because mm-hmm. if I don't um, partake in the communion mm-hmm. part of the service, then people may be looking at me and wondering, well, <laughs> why am I, why am I not taking it? And why this person didn't yeah, say? <laughs> you're gonna feel kind of left out, but it's okay because you got to remember this when you're partaking in this communion. He wants you to examine yourself, and if you're taking That's something, what the word of God you're taking this unworthily. Mm-hmm. You're bringing damnation to yourself. Yes. Now, if you bring damnation to yourself for partaking in something that you know you shouldn't, ta- mm-hmm. you shouldn't partake in, but you're doing it because you're wondering what someone else is thinking. Amen. You, so you can't blame someone else from the damnation that you're bringing upon yourself. Wow. And I love what it says. It says, let a man examine himself. Himself. Amen. It's between you and the Lord. Amen. It's not, not between the, you and no. the pastor or the leader. No. Amen. So, in when I looked at, if you, just starting with um, with verse 17 mm-hmm. of chapter 11, that, when I saw the topic of that, mm-hmm. Um, in my my study Bible or the King James Bible, it says the sub the, the subject says unworthy communion. Wow. So what I love about this, see, God does not leave us ignorant. No, He does. The <laughs> word is right there. Gonna, he's not going to leave you. If, if, if when you have questions, surely God He knows how to provide the answers for you. Always, Amen. So it's interesting that. You know, you talk about communion. Why do we do this? Mm-hmm. But he also lets you know. Um, he doesn't just talk about communion with him, but he also talks about unworthy communion. Mm-hmm. He lets you know what the unworthy is, and then he also lets you know what the worthy is. Amen. So, in um, beginning with verse 17, 17 through, uh, I think, 22... Yes, yeah, 17 through 22 speaks of the unworthy communion. Mm-hmm. So listen to this in the um, the trans what is it the, um, the passion the translation passion version. Amen. And it says the topic here is the Lord's table, and it says now on this next matter, I wish I could commend you, but I cannot, mm-hmm. because when you meet together as a church family, it is doing more harm than good. Wow. I've been told many times that when you meet as a congregation, divisions and cliques emerge. And to some extent, this doesn't surprise me. Hmm. Differences of opinion are unavoidable, yet they will reveal which ones among you truly have God's approval. Wow. Uh, Verse 20, when all of your house churches gather as one church family, you are not really properly celebrating the Lord's Supper. Mm. For when it comes time to eat, some gobble down their food (laughs) before anything is given to others. Mm -hmm. One is left hungry while others become drunk. Mm. Don't you all have homes where you can eat Mm. and drink? Don't you realize that you're showing a superior attitude by humiliating those who have nothing? Are you trying to show contempt for God's beloved church? Hmm. How should I address this appropriately? If you're looking for my approval, you won't find it. And then verse 23 mm-hmm. begins to talk about the, the um, worthy, the proper way to mm-hmm. have the Lord's Supper. Because it, it, so it came about, he had to give instructions on how to properly commune with him Amen. in public. Yes. In the in the church setting, so um, so yeah, because of the, the way people were doing things, they mm-hmm. were just imagine you you come there to commune with the Lord in the house of worship in the public setting. Mm-hmm. The congregation comes together, and you're eating at the Lord's table, but some people are gobbling up. They're trying yeah, trying to get there ahead. I can just imagine. This mm-hmm. is my my imagination. That people are getting there before others, 
and, and are they're trying to figure out or trying to say, well, um, certain people need to go before other people mm-hmm. to get there. But then you're not thinking about the next person that's coming behind you. You're gobbling up stuff. You're trying to get things ahead, trying to get more than what you need, not leaving enough for your brothers and sisters. In Christ. And again, this is in the house of the Lord mm-hmm. that people are behaving this way. Wow. Well, you know, um, God is, <laughs> it's, it's amazing how scriptures always open up and God give us revelation in just the next minute or two before we close. And I, I just want to um, say this. And, and like I said, God is, God is, you know, the thing about it is a lot of time we, we work, we go to work because we want to make an earnest living. We got bills to pay. That's why we go to work. We want to, um, we put food on the table, um, clothes on our back. That's why we work. We want to take vacation and do different things. So it's so much stuff why we do what we do. And many times we take communion. But like I said, I was just led to go on this teaching on communion because a lot of time we take it. And, you know, a lot of times um, we don't know why and why we take it. Why not? But the thing about it is do in remembrance of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, all that he's done, that's just symbolic. But the spiritual meaning behind it is that you communicating with God on a daily basis. And and thank you, Holy Spirit. Let me just say this. And a lot of times people don't realize is that they communicate with God every day. As you breathe in, you breathe out. You breathe in, you breathe out. Because he's the one who gives you the breath to breathe. Amen. So uh, I, I'm just thankful and grateful and uh, for some of the comments and um, Sister Bryant, Sister Deborah. And we thank God. And like you said, um, it's, it's all about you, you got to know why you partake in and let one examine itself. Because um, we, we know and the thing about it is that uh, when it all said and done, we thank God for communion and we thank God. Uh, for the bread and the and the wine, the juice, um, it's just symbolic. Um, that's why we do it because we represent and showing as far as not just you all, but we're showing the world that we are in agreement with God's word. Amen. Mm-hmm. And you know, you know how I am. I just, I just have I'm looking at this also. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. In the message version. Um. You know, and it just speaks so clearly. It speaks even mm-hmm. more clearly of where we are today, um, mm-hmm. or the, some of the language that we use today. Um, be, again, beginning with um, beginning with verse seventeen, it reads: "Regarding this next time, I'm not at all pleased. Mm-hmm. I'm getting." The picture that when you meet together, it brings out your worst side instead of your best. Mm. This shouldn't, you know. Wow. <laughs> to see this among believers. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and it's not just, I mean, if, if this is inside the church, then what do you expect to see on the outside? What, <laughs> what do you expect to see? Does mm. does it really surprise us what we're seeing? No. In the world today, from no. from those that say they love the Lord, mm. <clears throat> if they behave this way when they're coming to have a meal with mm. the Lord, and th- this this supper consists. When you think about a meal, it mm. consists of so many different things. Think about the supper. When you sit down to have supper, mm-hmm. you have you have your meat. Mm-hmm. Your protein, your starch. Um, what else do you have in there? Um, <clears throat> but just think about your meats, your vegetables. Um, your your say you got your appetizer before your supper. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, no, your supper includes all all different things. Um, you have your drink, and then you may have your dessert. You you know, there's so much in the supper, mm-hmm. impacted in the, in the supper. Um, physically, so think about what it is spiritually, what, what's included in a supper. Amen. Um, and then included in that supper is your the fellowship. The fellowship, and all of it is in the lordship. Amen. 
And it comes when you think about it. And I love what you're saying. It's all of it in the fellowship as we we are better and stronger together than we are divided as far as division. And we know what division. And when you think about it, it comes from the devil. The devil always wants to divide people. Amen. Yeah, because I mean, if we're sitting down having dinner together and we're speaking and fellowship, and why should why how? Can you imagine it bringing the worst out of you? Mm-hmm. But um, and and he says, first of all, he says, first I get this report on your divisiveness, mm-hmm. competing with and criticizing each other. Mm. But you're coming for the Lord's supper. Amen. But this is what you're. This is what. This is that um, unworthy communion that takes place. Divisiveness. People are being divided. What is it that's dividing you? What is causing you Mm -hmm. to compete with each other and and then to criticize each other? He says, I'm reluctant to believe it, but there it is. The best that can be said for, for it is that the testing process will bring truth into Mm -hmm. the open and confirm it. Wow. Now I lo- I love it. In in the but see er- everything that mm-hmm. everything that that comes about, God will get the glory out. He's going to use every Amen. every situation. Amen. Will be used. Amen. Um, for God's glory. Amen. And and and, and also it, it brings out it, it shows us it reveals He's mm-hmm. revealed letting us see exactly who is who. Mm-hmm. Who people are and what's in them, yes. what is being exposed, which we are seeing here today, from from so-called mm-hmm. churches, Amen. from the church. He says that the best. Let me see. Uh, yeah, he says I'm reluctant to believe it, but there it is. The best that can be said for it is that the testing process. Mm-hmm. It's a testing process. Mm-hmm. Will bring truth into the open and confirm it. Wow. Um. And then I find that you bring your divisions to worship. Mm. You come together and instead of eating the Lord's Supper, you bring it. You bring in a lot of food from the outside and make pigs of yourselves. Some are left out and um, go home hungry. Others have to be carried out too drunk to walk. <clears throat> I can't believe it. Don't you have your own homes to eat and drink in? Why would you stoop to desecrating God's church? Why would you actually shame God's poor? Mm. I never would have believed you would stoop to this. And I'm not going to stand by and say nothing. Wow. To God be the glory. We thank God for that word. And um, before we close, um, like I said, not to take up too much of your time. And we thank God for after church. And um, it is a blessing even as you can go back and fully, fully listen to the message that was preached teached this morning. And we thank God what we talked about. Let's talk communion. I, I love the topic. Let's talk communion. Amen. Um, last but not least, let me just say this. Because when it all said and done, God don't owe us nothing. God don't owe us nothing. You know why? Because he's given us everything that he needs to give to us, which is his son. He's given us everything. Amen. So it's my job, your job, our job to stay in fellowship, stay in communion with God. Amen. So we bless God for the word of God. And like I said, as you finish, enjoy the rest of your day. Um, Continue to Keep your mind and stay focused on Jesus. Amen. When it all said and done, I don't care what's going on around you, what's going on in your neighborhood, what's going on outside. When it all said and done, God is bigger because we serve a big God, an awesome God that works inside out. Amen. And, you know, and again, after church is about, excuse me. After church is about taking the scriptures and applying it to your life. Amen. So as you go throughout the days and the rest of the weeks, think about your communion mm-hmm. with Jesus Christ. Yes. Think about your communion with the word. And, and 
you're not you're examining yourself daily. Mm-hmm. Let us examine ourselves daily, not waiting until we uh, come together as as a group of believers with um with 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 you know with communion. Not just waiting for that time because this is still part. This is part of worship, and it's not just about that day. This is about every day of your life. Amen. And how you're examining your life. Amen. Um, growing in your relationship with Jesus Christ and his word. Amen. Grow in grace and remember, like I said, enjoy your day. Um, <coughs> blessing to you. Um, we're out of time and we <clears throat> thank God. Uh, we'll see you back on Wednesday for a midweek Bible study. To God be the glory. We want you to enjoy your family. Enjoy the rest mm-hmm. of the day. Um, and remember, uh, continue to stay in communion and communicate and communion with God. Amen. Amen. So, yes, and um, yeah, and, and, and in case any of our football fans don't know what time the Super Bowl starts, it starts at six o'clock. So, <laughs> so let's get ready to enjoy that. But um, by all means, um, stay blessed. Yes, be safe. Um, yeah, and remember that God is with you. He loves you. Amen. He knows all about what's going on with you and your family and your loved ones and um just know that he's he's not forgotten about you. Amen. He loves you. He loves you um with his whole praying, amen. With Daily. all of with his whole being, his entire being, he loves you. And um he's not forgotten about you. And also please make sure that you um are practicing your social distancing and uh, wearing your mask and washing your hands often, often. Okay. So I see we have some, what is that? Is that Kansas city chief? <laughs> yeah. That's who that is, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not even sure who's playing in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Blessing. And we love y'all and praying for you all <laughs> each and every day. Amen. Amen. <laughs>